weeks or work sharing arrangements to avoid forlogs in lead times. While reshaping working time arrangements to achieve better work life balance in the long term. The digital transformation of work and possibility to engage in remote work has also been accompanied by other benefits. It has presented possibilities for older, more experienced workers to prolong their working life on their terms and provided work opportunities for those in rural communities. However, for many others, it has compounded a sense of isolation and a loss of identity and purpose. With all its downsides, COVID-19 may also create new opportunities in agriculture and allied sectors. Thanks to lockdown restrictions, people may be impelled to minimize dependence on other states, resulting in a paradigm shift towards the agribusiness sector. The production of animal protein, sources like milk, egg, meat, and meat products has emerged as a potential means to address food security issues and protein malnutrition. Policies and programs in the sector will be thrust areas of COVID-19. According to the Confederation of Indian Industry, CII, 30% of agricultural enterprises are making profit, 35% at break-even level, and the remaining 30% are making losses. By 2022, of the total retail market in the country, food retail may occupy 70% of the market. It implies that there will be a huge demand for ready-to-eat and ready-to-cook products. The micro, small, and medium enterprises, MSME sector, which has been badly affected by the COVID-19 crisis, is making an effort to promote agribusiness and agri-industrial industrial sector. While the pandemic may represent a tipping point for the digital transformation of the workplace, it has also revealed deep fault lines. It is those in the upper income brackets who are the most likely to choose to work remotely, whereas those in the lowest have no choice other than commuting and exposed to vulnerable outcomes. Looking at the future, as digital and online work becomes a new normal, the demand for skilled workers is likely to rise along with their wages. Many low paid workers whose wages have been stagnating in the face of declining union power and the shifting employment relationship are likely to see their incomes eroded even further as the ranks of the unemployed increase. In the context of small business operators, the following subsectors are exposed to severe challenges, manufacturing, retail, and services. Service sector, the light blood of economic growth and jobs, contracted in March as new business and the export demand fell sharply as the coronavirus pandemic wreaked havoc globally. A private survey showed the hotels and hospitality sector in India has declined sharply in the first quarter of 2020, as the COVID-19 outbreak impact various segments of the sector. Coming off a high performance base in 2019, the COVID-19 outbreak and the containment measures introduced by the government have resulted in a severe drop in foreign and domestic travel, across both the tourism and business traveler segments. As the sector navigates turbulent times through the pandemic, growth and development of hotels in India is also likely to be impacted in the next two years. Technology companies can play a pivotal role in enabling business to embrace digital technologies in these uncertain times. Manufacturing, Easy credit option may enable the operators to link with the technological innovations. Digitization of inventory and building digital interface and digital store fronts to enhance customer engagement will prove beneficial for manufacturing units. Technology companies need to enable contactless payment and contactless delivery through app-based solutions 
and payment gateways. With a high demand fluctuation, leveraging data analytics to enable the SMBs to target the right customers will be the key. Services, the focus of IT service vendors has shifted to address the challenges of remote connectivity and system of customers, suppliers and partners, while also ensuring business community. The app-based service is ex expected to revive hospitality subsectors in service. Agribusiness can be developed through farmer producer organization, FPO, and farmer producer companies. It envisages providing services supporting producers and farmers in cultivation of post harvest activities. Kerala has nearly 120 NABAD supported farmer producer companies. The union government announced 10,000 FPOs for 2021. Kerala could explore this opportunity by establishing 400 FPOs in the current financial year, according to experts in the sector. Agri innovations, entrepreneurship, and technology need to be promoted to improve production and productivity post COVID-19. Holistically, the business entrepreneurs should adopt the following strategies to combat the pandemic effects. Checking the feasibility of business model, communicate transparently with your customers, maintaining healthy relationships with the contracted parties, managing employees and related optimization, keep your team engaged and communicate to stakeholders. Let me end my speech with these words from words of hope from the Holy Scripture. Lord, I maintain my hope in you and I hold on to the assurance that what I am praying for is already accomplished. Your word promises no good things does. He withhold from those that walk uprightly. I wait upon you for your definition of the good things. You will not withhold from me. As David prayed in Psalm 18.1, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Hope is a powerful force. It can pull you from despair or fuel your dreams. With hope, anything is possible. Without it, life is a dull prospect. Embrace your inner optimist with a wise and insightful hope. Loving God, give wisdom and guidance to the scientists doing research that they may develop an effective vaccine to combat the sickness speedily and successfully. May the loving and merciful God be with us all to protect us and help us to overcome this dreadful risk and danger in our lives. Thank you very much. May God bless you. And all the best for the following sessions. Thank you. No voice. No voice. And here. Can't hear. Not audible. Not audible. And yet.
daquilo, daquilo. Cadê os nossos tios? Vou tirar. Huh? You can stop your video, so then I think that uh, uh, your, we can listen your voice. Ankita, you speak. You speak. Uh, thank yeah. you, Father, for your kind and motivating words. Uh, we now move forward with our uh, program, and I would like to invite our first speaker for the day. Uh, please welcome Dr. Raj Agarwal. Dr. Raj Agarwal is currently the professor and director of All India Management Association, Center for Management Education. <laughs> Joining AIMA, Dr. Agarwal was professor and director of IILM Academy of Higher Learning, Greater Noida. He is also a visiting research professor in Montana State University, Billings, USA. He has more than 35 years of academic experience of working in prestigious national institutions like All India Management Association, Association of Indian Universities, Motilal Regional Engineering College, and other national institutes. He is also actively associated with statutory bodies like All India Council for Technical Education, NAC, and National Board of Accreditation. He has organized several training programs, both for reputed public and private sector companies like ONGC, Engineers India Limited, ICICI Bank, Power Grid Corporation, Delhi Metro, NTPC, among others. He also delivered sessions in these programs as resource person at middle and board level. So please welcome Dr. Raj Agarwal. Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ankita. Uh, first of all, uh, Father Principal has set up very nice spectrum of entire economy and whatsoever is happening at present. And uh, at the outset, I am really very happy to come in this uh, seminar uh, conference, international conference on business challenges organized by Xavier Institute of Men, uh, Xavier College. And um, hmm, uh, this, I see that uh, there is a wide participation uh, from all sectors. So, ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues, faculty colleagues, and distinguished guest students. We know that this entire world today is disrupted by coronavirus. Uh, this disruption is of a magnitude we have never seen since World War II. It forced more than half world population to stay and work from home. In that kind of situation, business is becoming very, very challenging. <clears throat> Not only business, but education and higher education segment where we belong, this has become a big challenge. So my presentation, this is going to focus on global challenges and opportunities in online education. Here we see universities ask students to vacate campuses and study from home. Since this disturbance occurred, all of a sudden in the middle of the semester, faculty and students did not want to lose out on time and faculty transferred the courses on online platform because that was the only available means. And this available means, if we trace the history of our Industrial Revolution 4, then we can find that this Industrial Revolution 4, this is completely led by this uh, cyber system. And within this cyber system, this online education, through this use of this artificial intelligence, through this use of this uh, blockchain, this is one of the most important development. Now, we have witnessed that over the last two decades, there have been and exposed exponential growth in higher education, particularly in professional educations like MBA program, management programs, technical education, engineering, etc. This growth became manifold in last one de decade, as reflected in a growth in number of universities, in students' enrollment, number and type of programs, and form in which education is delivered. 
currently we know that almost there are 1000 universities in a country there are a very vast expansion of this private universities in this country and most of these universities they are focusing on management as well as in technical program and within these universities this uh, management programs are becoming more and more important as higher education grew challenges in regulation quality faculty governance graduate employability and institutional autonomy emerged the need for new education policy was also felt and this was also announced uh, uh, that how there is going to be a link between education industry and employment this is also an accepted fact that good bad and ugly dimension of indian higher education also emerged during last decade more specifically there is a problem of access equity quality innovation transparency and how these are going to be resolved in a new education policy and after in this new era of this covid 19 uh, this is a big challenge we have seen mm-hmm. father principal has also pointed out that technology has become an important factor and technology now 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 intermediating the education process students also now readily accept the online classes too although they miss their campus and fun in face to face learning new world of digital business and education that has emerged education as well as business that has emerged father uh, father has also pointed out and there is a new paradigm as far as this education is is considered by in this new digital world we have seen that world has readily adopted digital mode of transaction entertainment and learning we are witnessing a rapid pace of diffusion of mobile inter- internet cloud technology artificial intelligence machine learning and automation technology in industry and our day to day life is is becoming more and more involved and engaged in these kind of activities visibly or invisibly social media for example has already gained wide acceptance pandemic accelerated this pace it is evident in this in this in the exponential growth of online education digital payment streaming services and e-commerce e-commerce without e-commerce we cannot work now mm-hmm. while it has made people's life less stressful it has felt individual lonely the social dimension in shopping and learning for example seems to have got lost uh, loneliness and several hours on machine have led to increasing the level of stress also. the world today is getting accustomed to working and studying from home this has redefined the meaning of home as it as it is no more just a place to live and enjoy one life but also double up for workplace school and college uh, home has become a school home has become a college uh, from morning we are engaged in online work online classes our kids are also involved in this online classes so everybody is working on many corporates have re- redefined their employment contract to include mandatory work from home for select number of days in a week and month in delhi almost in all the service organizations in it companies this culture of work from home uh, this is very evident uh, even in my organization for last four months we are working uh, working from home uh, this has also given an opportunity to firms to relook their physical space requirement as they work towards cost rationalization here this uh, cost model this has becoming very very important father has also pointed out that how new business model are going to be adopted in a new situation new scenario so this cost optimization cost model this is also going to be one of the integral part of the business it has also been seen as a safe option to work beside knocking out travel cost inconvenience in larger and metro cities like mumbai mumbai bangalore delhi and other similar cities in the world in in the context of higher education study from home in a synchronous and is a synchronous mode has expanded institutions reach and redefined 
the learning experience study from home and digitization of higher education has opened many collaboration opportunities these collaboration opportunities this is worldwide not only in india but all over the world that how one can collaborate how one can find it out new ways new means of learning and here this online education this is becoming very very important although this has taken away the joy of learning especially when one accept the fact that there is a value in socialization and there is a value in socialization value in a campus life and we find that at this moment we have lost this value of socialization learning experience is therefore a challenge that faculty together with the uh, with technology firm has to resolve this but it is also a fact that work from home or study from home gives individual uh, time for many other activities in life a much better life balance can now be expected and especially in indian condition one of the direct consequences of the pandemic is that big big will become more bigger and this is going to impact on business we have seen that how the reliance worth is increasing over the time and during this pandemic time this uh, net worth of this reliance company this is increasing very rapidly and this is because introduction of new kind of this technology and just look at the market share of amazon in re uh, re uh, re uh, e -re -re retailing and byju in school education in pre and post uh, pandemic byju share has gone up in online school education to 60% in a lockdown period coursera experience 6000% growth 6000% growth coursera has experienced in the first month of lockdown in the month of april 2020 the message is that while big will become bigger and hence gainer will be digital leader again we have seen that business is going to be more lop 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 sided going to be focused on service sector going to be focused more on technology sector so this is what that how one can make business more realistic and more balanced by focusing on agriculture by focusing that is the resilience of our country agriculture as well as msme sector which has been affected very badly by the uh, by the uh, by the covid crisis hmm. right. a world rapidly adopt new work uh, practices and technology individual face possibility of losing job if they do not reskill or upskill technology impacted jobs like service delivery and secretarial will see huge uh, huge volatility compared to job that require people skill decision making and complex problem solving problem higher education would now have to relook at their program structure and pedagogy uh, to include new skills uh, uh, so this is what that uh, all the management institute all the all the management program and specifically this mba program that required that how we are going to have a, a curriculum which is based on current scenario current situation a mba program will now need to uh, integrate technical cr critical thinking people's management and system skills with complex problem solving problem uh, every day we are facing uh, there is a challenge that uh, new uh, problems are emerging and how these new complex problem are going to be solved management education definitely and management graduates definitely have a role to play and they can play a very vital role in that kind of situation the curriculum should help uh, help develop not just intellect but also emotional and spiritual quotient of the graduates here this is what that social environment is very important empathy is very important how in a curriculum these emotional aspects as well as this spiritual aspects we can include this is a big challenge a pandemic has made it obligatory for management schools to develop a holistic graduates and not just one who has read management text in a context of management in school uh, management skill emphasis has been on resource management and process management 
program content, uh, content that too would now change. It needs to integrate practice from corporate and focus on skill building. As mentioned by me earlier, it would now have to integrate technical skill of artificial intelligence, cloud technology, internet of things, data analytics with the management skills of resources, people and process management. Spirituality need to be integrated in a program to help students understand and manage their lives in this kind of scenario, in this kind of complex situation. Complex problem solving skills that require understanding of business situation and how one element affect others and together impact uh, from future. This also requires mathematical skills. Micro specialization should also be considered. And so at a time when attractiveness of uh, MBA program is likely to suffer an institution may have the challenge of filling their capacity, such restructuring and flexibility will now have to be considered by the management school. At the same time, pedagogy has to be mixed with all kinds of teaching methods, case method, quizzes, uh, simulation, lecture, lecture, structured exercise, field-based project, and those that involve research in real time. Even courses of independent study um, should be considered as it can develop research analytical and critical thinking skill. Besides, it is one of the safe method of education in today's time since students do not have to meet physically in classroom. Uh, for faculty too, it works as faculty could guide from remote place, places. Group teaching should also be considered, especially if one has to structure the program in modular form. Finally, management school should consider developing bite size module. This would require an understanding of learning science and digital pedagogy. Demand for one year program has grown world all over rather than India because of the regulatory framework. The AICT and UGC doesn't recognize one year MBA, but all over the world, this is the accepted program specifically in UK and European countries. So there is a need that in India, we should also go for one year program. And this kind of program in this kind of situation uh, is becoming more important. It has now time for business school to collectively take up the matter with the government and persuade the government to allow a school to launch one year master's program. program. So this is what that uh, in, a, in, in this kind of time, the kind of skills which is required one year program, in my opinion, is good enough to provide. Uh, whether government should offer, uh, whether program should be offered online, hybrid, or in a campus is a decision that the school will have to take, considering their local conditions and students' profile. Hybrid and online are the way forward. Extensive use of video-based instructions like those on Zoom or Microsoft uh, Team will be the norm. Online education goes beyond um, just online lecture. It involves redesigning the academic process in totality. For example, cohort selection process would now have to change as admission test will be completely online. Subsequent stages of interview will also be conducted through a virtual process. Should there be a group discussion as required today for admission purpose now need to be discussed at length. Learning from US management school who take decision to accept or reject an applicant can be useful as long as, as all along these decisions are taken by faculty sitting many miles away from the applicant. All the above, uh, along with reorientation to digital world and faculty development will help management school to stay relevant and, and relevant in this changing time. Changes are required in leadership mindset and policies governing professional education in India. So this is a highlight that what are the changes which are needed at present. And if we want to make our, make our institution world class, we know demand for online courses have grown rapidly. For example, leading MOOC platform launched by Ministry of HRD. And this is one of the biggest innovation which ministry has done. Uh, and these courses are becoming very popular and very integrative in current COVID situation. Coursera has added 10.3 million learners globally, globally. And uh, this is increasing day by day. So one can see the market, one can see the demand for these kind of courses. 
adoption of technology in, on campus this was very slow earlier uh, uh, due to resistance by faculty as well as the uh, uh, budgetary issue financial issues but covid 19 has now made it an issue of the past it is estimated by kpmg in a report that by the end of 2020 online education would reach us dollar at 5.7 billion so this increase is very high but india uh, has already crossed this figure and now number of online education users are expected to be 9.5 million in 2021 up from 1.9 million in 2017-18 so almost this is what that we have added uh, 7.5 million uh, online users uh, uh, in two three years time uh, these are not just the university and college students but also uh, this has become a culture in corporate uh, and government employees also uh, so 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 this is not only the demand for online courses but various kind of structured program uh, program uh, demand for reskilling upgradation of a skill will also grow in this current situation and this is going to create the new opportunities for institutions as well as for for universities the value for degree will get augmented when it, when universities allow students to pick up courses from other sources like foreign as well as national universities and professional bodies uh, skills and competency and competency in a changing time this is becoming very very important in a particular structured program for example if the this cloud computing or internet uh, thing internet of things have not been included but uh, for employment for employ employability these kind of skills are needed so means that there is a good opportunities how we can uh, we can draw these courses uh, from national as well as from other international universities. Uh, because technology has made borders meaningless, thus creating a global opportunity for Indian institutions in online education. Mm. The recent announcement by finance minister uh, that top 100 universities in India can now offer online courses and programs without regulator permission has created a new paradigm in online education not only 100 universities were given permission but there is a serious thought in ministry of hrd that how 40 percent of course can be it could be it could be delivered through online mode uh, so this hybrid or this blended learning mode this is going to be a norm in coming years uh, uh, online uh, learning has shown significant growth over the last decade Technology, technological innovation has enabled people of all ages to learn from a distance and by utilizing different mediums, by creating LMS uh, through video tutorials, through graphics, and through slideshows also. Mm. Even before the pandemic, we have witnessed that research and market have forecasted that online education market would be dollar uh, three. 50 billion by two, uh, two, uh, 2025. So the number might update it after analyzing the impact of uh, COVID. And I think that this has already crossed. We have seen that this uh, first online curriculum that was in introduced by Cal Campus in 1994. And after that, this uh, this online education that has taken a significant uh, jump as the internet continued to develop and evolve. Most a more advanced version of the of these online educational schemes became available including blackboard in 1997 smart thinking in 1919 these organizations endeavored to serve as innovators in connecting students with highly qualified teachers one advantage of an online education is this that you can get this mit courses harvard courses uh, both free as well as this is what that uh, by paying uh, money you can connect. So this is what that the uh, best faculty from the world that could be available online. Mm -hmm. uh, the open course wire consortium have been in operation since 2002 and continue to expand a database to offer a range of free online courses material from MIT. 
similarly in 2008 khan academy this has become a, a famous name all over the world has was founded with a specific mission of providing a free world class education to uh, students through online uh, uh, online uh, material now has uh, drawing large number of students all over the world increasing availability of online resources have led to more and more student pursuing online courses by 2020 83 uh, percent of ceos and small business owners in us considered online education degree as credible as traditional degree so there is a wide acceptance as well as acceptability and recognition in us to online degree uh, um, degree and 63% of academic leader have stated that they believe online education has become an integral part of their long term educational as well as uh, academic strategy there are numerous online platform and they are providing quite quality content in a market such as udemy coursera uh, linda skill share uh, serving million of the uh, million of the people uh, by using different kind of technology and platform two tier university are also democratizing the learning by making courses accessible via online stanford university and harvard university give access to online courses under the category of computer science engineering mathematics business arts and personal development all these shows one thing there is a huge demand from people to learn online so then there is a good market government has also taken a proactive uh, action by uh, giving permission to 100 universities but further there is a need that how we are going to cope up with this uh, increasing demand how we are going to uh, avail uh, global opportunity how india could emerge as a leader in this online education uh, so online education in india uh, this market was valued at uh, indian rupees 39 billion in 2018 and expected to reach uh, dollar uh, this rupees 360.3 billion by 2024 but uh, by having a right kind of technology there is a further expansion uh, so this is expanding by a growth rate of 43.85% uh, uh, between this 2022 to uh, 2024 ease of uh, ease of learning flexibility and wide range of study material have influenced the overall growth of the industry along with this uh, online uh, market there is a online test preparation market this is also expected to reach rupees 94.75 billion by 2024 you know all india management association conduct a nation wide test mac mm. uh, this is very popular among two tier management institute so just after the outbreak of this covid 19 we have to go for proctored internet remote test yeah. so by adopting this kind of technology we can reach to each and every students they can take this test from their home so there is a big market for this uh, this kind of uh, testing service uh, and uh, this segment expected to be the fastest and this is this is more than this online education here this growth rate is 50.84 Mm, percent and uh, uh, so this is what that if this right kind of this infrastructure is going to be created uh, so obviously this can serve a lot of a lot of students gamification this is another area uh, mm, among online education so this is what that uh, simulation of concepts and level of advance advancement basis and in, incentive based learning are driving users engagement on online education platform online learning players nowadays are uh, continuously competing to offer differentiated product product differentiation within the simulation market uh, which has been developed uh, b2 uh, b2 is uh, to specialize in this area chanak is one of the uh, program gamification program developed by us and this is prevalent in most of the b schools like most of the iits they to have this gamification 
and this is also becoming very very project uh, through this uh, this is what that um, internship this virtual internship through this gamification that could be done live projects that could be done group discussions and career co uh, counseling session uh, that could also uh, give the um, similar kind of experience to users as happens in regular courses government of india is also um, of uh, allowing universities to offer faculty uh, fully online degree a change that could reshape education delivery in country while blowing open the door to previously limited market for us based online education service companies so means that policy change is also there to make it more and more comp uh, uh, competitive um, now even uh, we have uh, good market good opportunities but uh, you all have faced several problems and still facing several problems so one study conducted by ima uh, so we have noticed that uh, further there is a need that how we are going to strengthen the infrastructure in terms of technology devices network uh, networking wifi and bandwidth uh, to be more and more competitive and to provide more quality education uh, how we can create um, uh, this is what that uh, physical in infrastructure also because online education doesn't mean that uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, regular education will go off uh, but here in this covid situation uh, creating space and furniture to allow physical distancing of the students in a scenario of physical opening of the campus especially in a common places like classroom library hostel mess recreation activities including facilities facilities for sanitization distribution of masks and maintenance of hygiene this is very very important third is this that digital infrastructure in terms of selecting open education resources so open education resources after 2004 open education resources this has become very very important for this cost optimization, selecting the right kind of resources, best resources, as I gave you the example of MIT. But for that, this, uh, this infrastructure is essential. MOOC courses, other online content for providing link to the students as soon as new academic session start to allow blended learning in flipped classroom model. Now, this is important in the sense that most of the students, they are in remote areas and remote areas when physical when this kind of digital infrastructure is absent or this training for this digital infrastructure is absent uh, is missing then students may not able to link with the best uh, best and uh, quality open education resources uh, there is a need to develop the capacity building for teachers training the teacher to teach online and to develop online resources for students it has been felt and noticed that uh, although this online education that was that became mandatory more or less because there was no other option for teachers to adopt but there is a need for a teaching uh, for a uh, for a training there is a need to develop the capacity of uh, uh, teachers and uh, this is what uh, is very much required evaluate various online platform available for teach, teaching learning assessment and evaluation since since large number of platforms are available every university shall even evaluate the available platform and choose the one or more which best suits their requirement and budget so that when the academic session opens teachers as well as students are aware of that platform is used by their university this lms system how this is going to be developed there are free lms are also available so means that according to their need, according to their choice, they can go for the platform, the online platform, LMS also. And uh, the, here, this selection is very, very important part. Uh, internship and placement, uh, every university should uh, uh, ensure that online internship are, are available to the students. Even this AICT has launched a big project on, on internship as well as uh, online internship uh, along uh, by uh, connecting with the corporate so then the students can uh, get the internship in this time as well as further also uh, so, uh, so 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 universities institutions they need to identify suitable online platform available for internship and placement of the students and guide the students in using this platform collectively 
uh, next point is collaboration how this uh, this uh, um, collaboration between uh, indian universities as well as international universities because there are variety of courses wide range of courses are available so this could be this could happen how indian institute and uh, this uh, universities that could develop that kind of uh, that kind of this capability so they can meet uh, this challenge in this international market counseling of the students during this covid 19 pandemic all these the students were forced to stay home as a result which they miss the campus life the student uh, university should ensure that uh, student do not miss campus life by holding many programs to youth affairs online in addition to providing personal psychological uh, uh, academic and professional counsel to the students uh, in the in this time of mental uh, distress uh, so how students are going to be engaged in various kind of recreational activities so these are the challenge and this is a big opportunity this is a business also this uh, and how we can make this uh, online education highly uh, competitive in this world because this market of this online education this is emerging very fast and for us this is the opportunity thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and listening my thoughts very patiently thank you very much thank you sir that was uh, indeed a very informative session uh, sir we have received some uh, questions from the participants so yes. i think i will just ask you a few questions uh, from them uh one question that has been raised is that india was slowly taking baby steps towards the digital india program and we were uh, uh, looking forward toward more e-commerce companies joining the country and uh, moving towards the rural areas for incorporation of the students from those areas as well so given the um, suddenness of the pandemic situation it, it was unanticipated and suddenly we are uh, moving towards this online platform very quickly how can this uh, be managed properly how can the digital india movement be incorporated uh, in this pandemic situation yeah this is a very good question uh, in fact in one uh, seminar uh, i pointed out that uh, and uh, father principles has also uh, said that the growth rate is going to be 2% so this is 1.9 or 2% and uh, most surprisingly this growth rate um, is uh, happening because of uh, agriculture um, because somehow this uh, kharif uh, production um, uh, that has not been affected uh, supply chain that was affected very badly but somehow this procurement that was done and then uh, msme sector that has that was affected very badly because of this supply chain but somehow because this sector is so large in this country that they have contributed significantly what's over 2% growth rate we are going to achieve now here there is a question that when we have a resilience of economy through this msme so why not uh, modernize this msme hmm? why not uh, go for digitization of this msme sector right uh, why not go for digitization of agriculture sector right so this industrial revolution for uh, through this artificial intelligence through this uh, data analytics uh, through this blockchain have given us lot of opportunity Uh, how this msme sector in our country they are going to adopt and how they are becoming competitive uh, how they are they are exporting uh, 45% of the total export of india uh, how they are contributing uh, more and more in export so this is what that in a gandhian model of this cottage and small scale industries there is a scope that how this digitization that could be adopted both in agriculture as well in industry uh, and and specifically in msme sector so digitization is having a wider scope wider application and specifically in this msme as well as in the, as well as in this agriculture sector yeah uh, the, definitely government has taken several steps but you see that uh, this implementation is very slow this is what that 
private sector, even this professional association, they should take, they should come forward and then uh, they should play a very active role as far as this integration of this digitization in this MSME as well as in, as well as in this agriculture is concerned. Not audible, Ankita. Not audible. You, you are, uh, yeah, mute. Your. Yes, sir. So one more question I would like to ask you, sir. That is, uh, as we know, artificial intelligence and analytics it has made a mark in the global arena. So, uh, given the situation, how can it be incorporated with online teaching? And is it possible that AI and analytics can help uh, practical classes conduct conducting practical classes online? Is it yeah. possible? Yes, yeah. Actually, you see that uh, this is what that this blockchain and artificial intelligence, right? Uh, because you are a teacher, I am also a teacher. Now, here in a class, huh, this is what that uh, how this uh, uh, this uh, this the LMS bit you have taken, right? Now you have to show uh, uh, that uh, this some examples or this is what that uh, something related to that. Huh? So uh, generally what happens that in a physical class, you are telling to students go to library or this is the reference book huh? or this is the book huh? you consult or these are the pages huh? uh, there, this has been given. Uh, through this artificial intelligence and as well as this blockchain, huh? immediately you can connect, uh, you can connect uh, to that particular section. This is what that students, for example, is uh, having some kind of this uh, misunderstanding uh, misunderstanding about the concepts concept so immediately through this uh, artificial intelligence and blockchain uh, these concepts could be explained now here you see that what is the beauty and here this your lms is very very important now what happens that uh, this uh, most of the concepts uh, and specifically in mathematics uh, as well as in uh, technical subjects uh, depending on a profile of the students sometimes uh, very very difficult in a theoretical way to explain them so through this diagram through this images uh, through this uh, funny anecdote Funny examples, you see that uh, there are the various ways and means by which these, uh, these could be explained. It depends that how dynamic your LMS is eh? and uh, how dynamic your LMS is, is, is there. That depends that uh, this is what that uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, cloud computing, Internet of Things, this is what that data analytics of the data analytics as well as this artificial intelligence blockchain, how well and how effectively this has been used. Uh, OK, sir, last question that is. Uh... There are a few areas, uh, especially in the rural India, where internet connectivity has not reached as of yet. And there are students who might feel left out uh, when this entire education system is going through a surge of change. So how can we ensure inclusive growth for all the students of our country as a whole? Here, actually, you see that uh, although this uh, government of India and uh, the number of this internet users in our country is increasing very fast, huh? number of this uh, this uh, users of this various kind of this uh, this uh, digital devices which have been used, this is increasing very fast. And uh, here, this is the role of uh, uh, government that how this kind of this infrastructure in in rural areas, huh? how this. Uh, internet connectivity and as well as not only this internet connectivity but this connection uh, connection uh, 24 hours connection that could be provided uh, so so uh, so obviously you see that this kind of infrastructure there is a need this is a necessity if you if we have to be competitive if we have to gain uh, in international market uh, through this online education or we have to uh, create a market for us uh, then this and uh, not only this market for us but in from the context of this equity this is very very important uh, in, in uh, while conducting our mat examination we too have faced this kind of problem this paper pencil examination or students are not comfortable in uh, in uh, appearing through this uh, uh, in uh, through this uh, this uh, online uh, method this proctored method method right uh, so they so so here this uh, this some kind of training we started a training in a form of mock uh, mock uh, interviews or this mock training uh, so same this uh, faculty members they too are facing uh, 
दिस इज वॉट दैट फर्स्ट फैकल्टी इज नॉट ट्रेंड then the students are not trained huh? uh, and faculty is not trained that how to use various kind of how to make session interactive how to use this case study how to use quizzes how to use this games games etc so here you see that uh, uh, first this creating this infrastructure uh, it infrastructure in remote areas in rural areas this is very very important and side by side not only creating this infrastructure it is what that training and training first i'll say that training of this faculty members this is very very important very very important because you see that even after this covid 19 situation what are the what so far are the best practices which are emerging uh, people are going to adopt companies corporations are going to adopt work from home norms are going to be adopted uh, in a refined or in a different way online education is going to be adopted you know, in a refined or in a different way uh, so this uh, in my opinion this blended learning uh, uh, both online education as well as this uh, campus education this physical education uh, after this covid 19 this is going to be now uh, so what are the best practices which are emerging these are going to be adopted so here this technology is a big enabler is going to play a big role so we have to compete in a world so we have to provide that kind of infrastructure structure in a rural area thank you so much sir that was indeed an enlightening session thank you so much for making time from your busy schedule uh, and now i would request our student abu bakar to introduce our next speaker for today's session thank you ma'am thank you dr raj agarwal for such an enriching and insightful session without further ado i would now like to introduce our next esteemed speaker dr santosh kumar dev Presently, Dr. Deep is serving as the director of MBA program and associate professor in Department of Tourism and Hospitality Management at Faculty of Business Studies, University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. He received his PhD degree in Service Management under Erasmus Scholarship and Executive Program in Strategic Digital Marketing from University of Cambridge in association with Upgrad. He completed his postgraduate diploma in Supply Chain Management. from Bangladesh Institute of Human Resource Management he also completed his MBA and BBA degree majoring in marketing from University of Dhaka he has also conducted classes at Vincent Paul University in Poland as a visiting professor he has many international publications in the area of business and tourism in renowned journals i would now request dr santosh kumar dev to address the second session on impact of covid-19 outbreak on tourism business thank you thank you so much everyone and good evening uh, so at first i want to give the special thanks and really i'm very uh, impressed today after having the introductory speech of uh, father dr dominic savio really that was a very fantastic related to the covid 19 and today's uh, advisor here present uh, father peter and uh, father joseph and i want to give the special thanks to today's organizing secretary dr shonjeep kumar bashu and i want to give the special thanks uh, to dr shumant dotto to invite me in today's session and the session is very timely and related to the time and demanding of the time this is a managing business in a post covid uh, 19 world uh, changes challenges and uh, strategies Uh, so now i'm just going to show some uh, uh, slide uh, uh, excuse me i need uh, i need the permission from the host to, to share my slide it please uh, the host please uh, please uh, enable me to uh, to show my slide please hello so you should be able to share your screen now Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Right now, it's okay. Uh, 
Uh, now I'm just going to talking about the impact of COVID-19, COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, on tourism business. Uh, so if we're just going to talking about in you know, a global market and uh, during the COVID-19, one of the most uh, uh, negative impact uh, sector is tourism. So uh, we're just talking about the COVID-19 uh, started from uh, the end of December in China, Wuhan, after that it just uh, uh, spread in all over the world. Uh, right now, two thirteen countries and two territories. So that is one of the big negative impact on tourism industry. So if we're just going to talking about in case of the negative impact of uh, uh, COVID-19 on tourism industry, before that I just show here, in the time of 2001st, 11 September, the terrorist attacks also make a negative impact and in the global uh, international tourist is, uh, decrease here. But the time is 2003rd, the another one epidemic related to the SARS outbreak and also it is decreases the total number of domestic and international tourists. In 2009, this is the global economic crisis and global economic crisis also, the tourism is related to the income of the people and income influences to the laser activities and traveling from one destination to another destination. So in 2009, there have another more intense negative impact or adverse impact on tourism industry in globally. But in 2015, the Mars outbreak, that also has a negative impact in tourism industry and today I'm just going to talking about the coronavirus, how they're just going to impact in uh, the tourism industry in 2020. Uh, but in case of the tourism, tourism is a very important sector and which is related to the sustainable development goal and the journey towards 2030. But uh, this is the key point and main areas, three, uh, in case of sustainable development goal, there have 17 goals and 105 objectives. Out of 17 goals, three goals is directly related to the tourism. But I'm just going to show here some uh, statistics uh, uh, based on WTTC. In 2019, travel and tourism, direct, indirect, and induce impact. Uh, I just show here. In tourism, 2019, total number of the tourists in globally 1.56 billion. That was in 1950, after the Second World War, that was only 25 million in globally. But in case of the direct and indirect, the total benefit to the economic contribution in globally 8.9 uh, trillion USD. And that was in 1950, that was only the 2 million. But in 2019, 10.3% global GDP contribution comes from the tourism sector. But 330 million jobs uh, and 330 million people engage in this industry. Out of 10 people, one people accommodation and job opportunities created in tourism industry. But uh, if I just uh, talked about the last five years, uh, statistics shows that out of four, one job is uh, created in tourism sector. So today's the time tourism is becoming the more promising and one of the most important sector to create the employment opportunity in globally. USD 1.7 trillion visitor export in 2019 and uh, 948 billion USD capital investment, which is generated from uh, the 2019. But if you're just going to talking about the impact of COVID-19 outbreak in global tourism, uh, there is a, one of the figure, uh, uh, this figure uh, is just going to representing that in uh, the January, January there was plus 2% uh, growth of uh, uh, international tourists. But after that in February is going to representing the 9% the uh, minus, I mean, decreasing the total number of international tourists. This is 9% and March is a uh, 57%. And uh, there are the three, uh, three shades is representing in July, uh, that is a uh, 58% uh, uh, there are total number of international tourists is decreased and uh, the scenario is related to the in September, this is predicted that and forecasting that in internationally total number of tourists will be decreased 70%.
And in December, that is also just going to forecast it here, the total number of international tourists will be decreased 78%. But according to the statistics of UNWTO, the International Organization of uh, Tourism, they just uh, make some uh, scenarios. Prospect for the year have been the downgraded and several times uh, since the outbreak and uncertainty continues to dominate. Current uh, scenarios uh, point to possible declines in Arab 58% to 78% for the year. They predicted that 58% to 78% international tourists will be decreased in 2020. And another one thing that is uh, related to the COVID-19 impact on international tourism in January to April, and it is related to the global scenario. In case of the global scenario, the 100% destination with the travel restriction, which is declared by 7th May 2020. Uh, but this is related to 180 million fewer international tourist arrival. And there is also just going to another prediction, 195 billion lost in export revenues from international tourism. But if you're just going to talking about international tourist arrival, the scenarios is related to the January to April at 2020. Uh, this is in 2019, the total number of international tourists was 1.5 billion, and which was forecasted that in 2020, that will be increased the 4% growth rate. But uh, the reverse phenomenon is seen due to, due to the COVID-19 and January to April in 2020, that is minus 44% international tourists. But if we are just talking about uh, the very significant, uh, there are Americas, Europe, Africa, Middle East, and Asia Pacific. Uh, so in case of the Asia, America, this is 2019, 220 million, the total number of international tourists and expected that in 2020, there will be the total growth is a 2% uh, international tourist. But, there, but the scenarios due to the COVID-19 shows that in January to April, in January to April, the total uh, number of international tourists in America that is a decrease minus 36 percent. In Europe, 2019, total number of international tourists was 745 million, 745 million international tourists, and expected that uh, in 2019 the total growth rate will be 4 percent in 2020. But uh, due to the COVID-19 from January to April 2020, the result shows that in Europe, there is a decrease of 44% international uh, tourists. But another scenario is related to the Africa. Africa in uh, 2019, 73 million international uh, tourists was, and they also expected that uh, from the UNWTO, in 2020, there will be increased the 6% international tourists, but a reverse phenomenon has, uh, has occurred here uh, during the COVID-19 outbreak in globally. Uh, this is from January to April 2020, there 35% international tourist is a decrease. But if we're just talking about the Middle East, also they're just right now focusing in uh, tourism uh, to the economic development of the country. The 2019, the scenarios is representing 61st million uh, total international tourists and expected that 2% international tourist uh, growth rate will be in 2020. Uh, but, uh, but during the time of uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the scenarios are uh, seen here from January to April 2020, minus 40% international tourists in Middle East. But the very interesting thing, this is related to the Asia, and Asia is related to Bangladesh, India, and other countries. But the scenario is 2019, 361st million international tourists, and expected that in Asia 2020, there will be 4% growth of international tourists, but the reverse of phenomenon is occurred here also. This is January to April 2020. The statistic shows that minus 51% uh, uh, international tourist, I mean, day by day international tourist is decreased due to the rest restriction 
of uh, tourism destination. Uh, but the, another one thing is related to the COVID-19 uh, outbreak uh, impact on global tourism. This, uh, this is the total inbound in Europe. This is representing minus 79% uh, will be, I mean, 79% international tourists will be decreased in 2020 uh, due to the COVID-19. And uh, the South America also represent here the minus or the total number of uh, inbound tourists will be decreased 87.1% uh, and Central uh, America 63.6% will be decreased. Caribbean, they also expected that here, the 66.5%, uh, the total number of international tourists will be decreased and North America 63.7%. But in case of overall uh, America, this is representing uh, the total number of inbound tourists or international tourists will be decreased here, 68.1%. But in Africa and Middle East also, uh, also they're representing that in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic and restricted uh, in all the tourism destination up to right now, and few destination is open in limited, uh, limited uh, number of uh, tourists. So that's why uh, they just estimated that by UNWTO here, 49.9% total number of inbound tourists will be decreased in Africa and Middle East. But in case of Asia Pacific, this is a very alarming issue, but uh, they're uh, saying that 114% the total number of international tourists will be decreased. Uh, now, uh, this is also the another part and a moving part of COVID-19 impact on global tourism. But in case of global tourism, under these scenarios, the impact of the loss of demand in international travel and could translate into the loss of 850 million to 1.1 billion international tourists in uh, 2020 which was in 2019, 1.56 billion total number of international tourists. But in 2009, the GDP contribution uh, was 2.9 trillion USD directly to the global economy. That is 10.3%. But in uh, 2020, during, to the, uh, during the COVID-19, the losses is expected that uh, nine, 110 billion USD to 1.2 trillion USD export revenue from tourism sector. But 330 million people in 2019, our statistics found that there, the people are involved in tourism sector, but during the COVID-19 pandemic, it's expected that 100 to 120 million direct tourism job at risk right now. And which also representing that out of 10 people, one people is involved a uh, job in tourism sector. But uh, this is the far the old step crisis that the international tourism faced uh, since the record began in 1950. And the impact will be felt, uh, felt to varying the decrease in different global reason and at overlapping times. And this is the very concerned areas is related to Asia and Pacific expected to rebound first. Now I just uh, show here the COVID-19 impact on tourism uh, and there, uh, there is one of the comparative analysis in India and Bangladesh a scenario. Uh, the, in case of the branding uh, tourism in India, the status is incredible India and GDP contribution according to the WTTC, that is 9.2% in uh, 2018. And the sector employs 12.75% of the country's workforce. 87 million people were employed in uh, tourism industry uh, during uh, the financial year of 2018 to 19. 38 billion million job uh, at risk right now uh, because of uh, coronavirus uh, outbreak uh, in globally and also in India. This sector also count for 12.75% uh, of employment 
in which 5.56% is directly related and 7.19% uh, influence is indirectly related to the tourism sector. But uh, the 70% of total workforces due to the COVID-19 and report of KPMG, a financial service and a business advocacy firm, they uh, just expected that 70% job right now rates in uh, tourism sector. But in case of Bangladesh, the branding uh, strategy of Bangladesh is a beautiful Bangladesh and GDP contribution of tourism in Bangladesh is 4.4%. 18.58 lakh total jobs is created in, uh, in uh, Bangladesh and that is 2.9% of total jobs. And Tour Operation Association of Bangladesh estimated that 5,700 koru taka will be the loss uh, during the time of COVID-19. And Pacific Asia Travels Association, Bangladesh chapter also estimated that 9,705 koru taka, uh, uh, taka losses. And also estimated by the Pacific Asia Travels Association, the job reaches uh, three to five uh, lakhs uh, people, three lakhs of uh, 5,000 people in our uh, tourism sector. Uh, but uh, before going to uh, talking about uh, the recovery uh, strategy of uh, tourism, I want to show uh, here uh, one of the video, please. Dr. Deep? Hello? Yes, Dr. Deep? Yeah. Can you Hello? hear me? Can you? Yeah, please. Can you see the video? Yes, I can. We can. We can see the screen. Okay. Video you can share. Uh, you can see? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So, Dr. Deep, uh, can yeah. we move on to the question answer session? Okay, uh, I'll take the two or three minutes after that, please. Yes, Dr. Deb, no problem. Uh, now again, again, I just uh, t talked about here. Uh, uh, here, the some recovery uh, strategy. Uh, so here, the first one strategy is uh, stay at home today and travel tomorrow. So this is one of the very important concept in uh, during the time of uh, COVID-19. And in case of the financial and political support, is uh, very important to recovery and measure the targeting tourism sector. But in case of the recovery of the tourism sector, uh, sector after uh, post COVID, uh, this is related to, we have to be focused on urban tourism for continuous development of tourism sector. And also the government incentives program, it must be available to 
and the uh, and loan repayment relaxation for small and medium enterprise including cash support to the employees in tourism industry electronic and print media should have to be take a very positive approach to support the tourism industry reviving post covid and after post covid uh, the uh, post covid the uh, behavioral pattern of the tourist there will be change so uh, so the low price uh, low price package uh, i mean tourism package it must be offered and that will be uh, attract draw the attention of the tourist uh, in upcoming days after the pandemic the po uh, focus on cost cutting approach is maybe the video conferencing virtual tourism conference virtual meeting and virtual tourism fair along with and need to monitor the tourist behavior which may be reformed due to social and economic uh, changes of covid-19 uh, un wto may call the international organization donor agencies and uh, political support uh, for our quick recovery from a pandemic and also make a wider action and recovery plan uh, to revive the tourism industry and economy and finally uh, the post covid world the people might be allowed to traveling with antibodies against the covid-19 freely with uh, some sort of uh, health assurance and also offer the discount packages on airlines and hotel industry uh, so thank you so much everyone uh, for your being time with me thank you sir thank you for such an interesting session uh, we uh, now move on to the question answer uh, session sir uh, we have a few questions uh, from our participants. Shall yes. I begin, sir? Sure. Okay. So, sir, uh, the first question is uh, from our fellow faculty member, uh, Dr. Shomrat Roy. That is, recently, all of a sudden, Indian economy is enjoying trade surplus. How will it affect the financial domain of Indian tourism? Move on to the question answer session, sir. Uh, thank you so much. In case of the tourism in India, so definitely uh, right now the, during uh, during to the COVID nineteen, one of the mostly adverse impact on tourism sector. So because of uh, because of people uh, employment is a uh, very rich uh, position at right now. The people those who are uh, working daily basis in hotel or casual basis in hotel. So many people they lost their job. So. I personally believe that uh, after the COVID-19, the people income will be decreased. So that's a low price package and others, uh, I mean, e-tourism related services, if they're able to offer, so that will be increased the total number of tourists in upcoming days. So uh, today is the time we have to be given more emphasis on virtual tourism and online services related to e-payment, e-visa processing and e-reservation and uh, such a way we have to be focused on, please. Uh, sir, uh, the next question we have from our fellow faculty member, Dr. Shohili Ghosh, that what would be the impact on the hospitality sector, which is directly linked with the tourism sector? Uh, definitely, if we are talking about the hospitality, hospitality uh, related to the five-star chain hotel, four-star chain hotel, and three- and two-star hotel. And uh, we have the different type of boutique hotel and laser hotel. So definitely, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, 100% uh, tourism destination is restricted. So that's a laser hotel. Uh, the last year, uh, in, the, uh, in the time of Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr, and Durga Puja, I mean, festival time, that was 100% occupancy rate. But in uh, 2020, due to the COVID-19, the occupancy uh, rate is 0%. The 100% tourism destination is restricted. People, they, uh, they, they love to having uh, a stay at home right now. And globally, uh, there is one of the concept is stay at home today and travel tomorrow. So we are just more focusing on life rather than a travel. So, uh, so, uh, so we have to be uh, focus uh, the areas. The areas is related to the people. Most of the people in hotel they are working in daily basis, and some of the people in a hotel they are working in casual basis. But I personally requested to all the stakeholder 
uh, to uh, please don't uh, terminate the people from your organization because we have to be protect the life and uh, job. Both is very important. Both is very important for the upcoming days. Uh, so I personally believe that government incentives is very essential and government have to be uh, supported uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the losing concern uh, people or stakeholder related to the hospitality industry. And at a time, at a time, the flexible rate loan is very soft. Uh, interest rate loan is essential to survive the hospitality sector in India and Bangladesh. Okay, uh, sir, also um, we have a question regarding the viability of the virtual tourism that you mentioned. So how can that, can you just uh, uh, explain that in a bit details? Uh, thank you so much. If you had just uh, look at the Italy, they just make a very fantastic video on a Vatican City or Colosseum. After that, uh, they just use the YouTube channel and other channel uh, by uh, promoting this one. And they just use a few dollars and uh, make it boasting to all the people. So whenever I just watch this video, I, I feel an uh, interest in my mind. I want to visit the Vatican City. So by this way, uh, if uh, I think uh, India is a very big country and uh, there is a huge number of the natural uh, tourism destination, man-made tourism and archaeological site also. So uh, there uh, can be, uh, can be uh, produced a different type of destination related promos, videos and uh, your uh, country branding studies is incredible India. And also Bangladesh is a very beautiful destination. We have world largest sandy uh, sea beach. Uh, so uh, we have to be designed the different type of promos and we have to be use the online uh, facilities to attract the international tourists. And I personally believe that uh, we can use the social media. It may be Facebook, YouTube, and it's maybe WhatsApp and other sources. If you are just going to reach the large number of target people. And I personally believe that after seeing such in videos, they feel the more interest to visit a destination. But this way, uh, I hope that in 21st century, the term is uh, digitalization and globally technological progress areas we are living. Uh, so most of the cases we have to be uh, more promoting areas is social media. Social media uh, may be attract the larger number of international tourists. Okay, uh, sir, before we move on to the next question, I would kindly request you to transfer the host rights uh, back to our student ones. Okay, thank you. I send it, please. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, uh, the next question is that obviously, due to this pandemic situation, uh, obviously, many people have uh, lost their jobs in both the tourism sector, also in the employment sector. Now, after the tourism sector revives, that also we do not have a, a particular, uh, you know, we cannot see a particular date or time when it shall happen in future. But when it happens in future, how do you think that these people uh, will sustain for so long? What is the other alternative that we could do for these people uh, who were actively involved in the tourism sector? Uh, thank you. Definitely, if you are just uh, uh, talking about the tourism and hospitality sector, many people, uh, they losses their job and most of the people, uh, their job at risk uh, right now. So uh, if I'm just going to talking about the reviving the such and people, I do believe that the government incentives is very important here. And alternatively, uh, government uh, Tourism regulatory board, they may have to be provided a clear instruction uh, to the stakeholder of the tourism. Uh, uh, so if you are uh, just uh, uh, don't uh, cut the job of the people. So I personally believe that uh, during the time of COVID-19, we have to be focused on both things, life and, uh, and occupation. Both is very important here. So at that time, it may be discussed uh, uh, or 
uh, we may cut up the 30% or 40% salary of the people, but if they get the 60%, they will be survived their life. So if the one person, they lost his job, so uh, how they will survive in upcoming days? So I personally believe that uh, the concerned authority, I mean, tourism uh, controlling board, it's maybe the Ministry of Tourism, it's maybe the others regulatory board, they have to be given a clear instruction. Uh, the uh, tourism related stakeholder, it's maybe tour operating association, travel agency association, or airlines association, or tour operator, tour guide, the people, those who are working the freelance. So I hope that the alternative source of income of these people may be virtual, uh, virtual, I mean, uh, tourism, they have to be started from right now. Online basis, the offer, online services, and online visa processing activities that can work here and they can assist the travel uh, to make the visa for another countries. And I personally believe that e-services, the e-services is very important to survive. Uh, and this would be the one of the alternative source of uh, surviving. Uh, I think your, uh, your microphone yes, is off. Please. Yes, sir. So next question that I would like to ask you is that both India and Bangladesh are very densely populated countries. So when, as you mentioned, the uh, tourism, uh, the tourism uh, schemes of both the countries for India, it's incredible India for Bangladesh, it's beautiful Bangladesh. So once the pandemic gets over, once, once we uh, stabilize a bit, and uh, once the both the governments of the two countries, they start again with the promotion of their tourism sector, uh, what do you think that the government should do to reassure the people who are visiting their countries, the tourists, that uh, you may come to our country, everything will be fine and everything is under control? What do you think should be the steps taken by the governments? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so before traveling one country, the international tourist, they're just looking for safety, security. And right now, after the post-COVID, they will just looking for the healthy and hygienic services. So I do believe that government, uh, they have to be taken some initiative to attract the international tourist. It may be by their uh, embassy or high commission website, uh, they may provide the information related to the tourism destination and they have to be provided. We are offering the healthy and hygienic services and the people, those who have a, a, a COVID-19 antibodies, they also may most welcome to traveling in our country. So I personally believe that uh, from the airport to, to any other destination, the government, they have to be take some strategy promoting or branching the tourism. But uh, right now, the branding strategy is related to the online branding or e-branding. E-branding, uh, uh, e electronic branding is very important in 21st century uh, because uh, most of the people in a global market, uh, they won't uh, love to reading the, uh, I mean, uh, hard paper or newspaper. They just uh, love to having the news in social media. So I personally believe that government, they have to be promote their concern authority. It's maybe the Ministry of Tourism, they can make some promos, videos, and other promotional package, and they have to be make some uh, video related to the post COVID, how they're providing the better services to the international tourists. By this way, if they're just going to take the initiative, I personally believe that in upcoming days, the international tourists will be increased in Bangladesh and India. Thank you, sir. I just have one last question for you. This question is from me. I uh, recently read that Disneyland is going to uh, be open for everyone and they are taking the necessary precautions uh, for uh, the opening. So we all know that Disneyland is a much uh, sorted after place, especially for children and their parents. They all want to visit Disneyland. Very, very famous. So uh, what is your view on this? How do you think this will work out? Uh, so definitely during the time of COVID-19 in different countries and different uh, tourism destinations, they also make a strategy to start their business in a limited limited way, but not in a broader perspective because uh, they're just going to maintaining the social distance and others' perspective. If I'm, I just want to give one information, in airlines industry, they're also start to, uh, uh, start to 
uh, their business from one country to another country. But at that time, they're just uh, selling the 70% of ticket and rest of the 30% they don't uh, sell here. But one of the objective here, the 70% they're selling because uh, the two people, they will not be seen uh, one by one. So there are 30% they don't sell and they're just going to maintaining the social distance. So at that time, they're just looking for the survival to the fittest and they're not looking for the business. So I do believe that in a uh, different type of uh, laser destination, whenever they're just uh, think about to start right now. Uh, and I personally given one example, when the America and Australia, they just opened their CVs. Uh, uh, you have seen the news, the large number of the people they just want to visit here, but there is no social distancing. Uh, so the people for the long time, they're passing their time at home and they're just looking for the recreation inbound uh, within the country. I mean, I personally believe that within the very short time, domestic tourism will be uh, uh, again, uh, it's come, it's reshaped like the 2019, but the international tourism, it will take time because the international tourists, they just think about in a country, what is the real scenario of the country COVID-19? And after that, they just make a decision, I will visit or not. But I personally believe that if a country within the very short time, they can, uh, they can uh, protect or they can take a strategy to reduce the COVID-19, uh, I mean, uh, infected rate if they decrease and international tourist perception to the very positively to a country. But I want to give the last one information to you, please. Going to consider the Maldiv, uh, I seen the yesterday, they reopen their tourism sector. Just one thing they have to do. You have to be go with the uh, Corona negative report or certificate and they just start their business because most of the country uh, in the world, uh, their main income uh, economic revenue generated from the tourism sector. Even I personally said that India also a very big, uh, a big uh, portion of the GDP contribution comes from, from tourism and Bangladesh also the 4.4%. And I personally believe that if the COVID-19 uh, is uh, the, the prolonged for the long time, so I personally re, uh, recommend that the tourism destination, it may be start in a limited way. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for taking time out from your busy schedule and uh, enriching us with your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to now invite Reverend Father Joseph Pulandai, uh, Vice Principal, Bicom Morning, St. Xavier's College, Kolkata, to kindly deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, Father. Thank you, Reverend Father Principal, Father Vice Principal, respected speakers, members of the faculty, dear students, and all the participants. A very good evening to all of you. The emergence and the potential outbreak of COVID-19 novel coronavirus has been the talk in India since March 2020. The menacing pandemic has claimed the lives of almost 6 lakh people and severely jolted the world economies, throwing them at the mouth of inevitable global recession. With the lockdowns enforced major sectors like manufacturing, retailing, tourism, transportation, airlines, shopping malls, theaters, hotels, restaurants, etc., have been completely dismantled, which has blighted their growth trajectory and posed some serious questions over their sustenance. It is a no-brainer that the primary aim of doing any business is to make profit. And it is this profit which has witnessed a major shrink during this lockdown. Slowly, businesses are reopening and gradually everything will become normal. The transient world will be back on track and businesses will once again look to start from where it left. But truth to be told, the post-COVID-19 era will permanently reshape our world. Businesses will face prodigious challenges which needs to be overcome, as well as the businesses will have to rethink their strategies and implement some crux changes. While followed from the crisis is both amplifying familiar risks 
and generating new risks. It is also opening new vistas for managing challenges more systematically and looking for ways to rebuild. Businesses are expected to go digital with lots of video conferencing and live assessments happening via digital platforms. The post COVID-19 era still remains a mystery as nobody knows what is going to unfold. However, there is much hype and anticipation swirling business and the challenge they are about to face. People are keen to know about eye twisting and in trading strategies they will resort to in order to fight the challenges. From my personal viewpoint, I really think that firstly, the businesses should aim for survival rather than just running after profits. Ways to sustain itself should be the primary objective for any business. Secondly, pre-planning for any exigencies like environmental or natural threats, as well as any man-made accidents that might occur, which can further jolt the sustenance of business. And third, the organization should look to develop a robust organization immune system, rather than just looking to gain new customers or running after profits. With these words, I like to express my sincere and heartfelt gratitude to everyone for making the first day of the webinar a grand success. First of all, I would like to thank Reverend Father Dr. Dominic Savio, the principal of St. Javier's College, Kolkata, for his welcome and keynote address and for his constant support, encouragement, and words of motivation. His leadership has always been brilliant and especially during these tough days. I thank Father Peter Arrokium, Vice Principal Evening, for his support and guidance. I, in a very special way, would like to thank our two speakers, Dr. Raj Agarwal, Director of All India Management Association, New Delhi, and Dr. Sandosh Kumar Dev, Director, Department of Tourism and Hospitality Management and Faculty of Business Studies, University of Dhaka, Bangladesh, for accepting our invitation to be part of this great webinar. Their ideas, presentations, and deliberations on the topic has been quite enriching, enlightening, and valuable. I am sure every participant of this webinar has been greatly impressed by a thought-provoking discussions. I sincerely express my heartfelt gratitude to both of them. Thank you so much, Dr. Raj Agarwal and Dr. Sandosh Kumar Dev for your warm presence. I also wish to thank Dr. P.P. Ghosh coordinator IQAC for his wonderful introductory speech on today's theme and thank his sincerity, hard work and commitment. I'd like to thank the organizing secretary and Dean, Dr. S.K. Basu, coordinator, Dr. Samantha Datta, technical assistant, Professor Ankita Samantha, the MCs, Ms. Debangana and Mr. Abu Bakr, all the faculty, students, participants and well-wishers for your support and making it a grand success. At last, I thank the Almighty, without whom nothing is possible. Thank you one and all. May God bless you all. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your kind and encouraging words. Uh, dear participants, uh, I would like to tell you that uh, the feedback form link will be provided tomorrow in the YouTube chat box during the live stream. Also, we deeply regret the minor inconvenience caused during the starting of today's webinar. Uh, sorry for that. And also, I would like to inform you that tomorrow's uh, webinar link will be sent in the, YouTube, in the WhatsApp groups, uh, the respective WhatsApp groups, it will be sent. So we will meet tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, kindly uh, be present. Thank you very much. Till then, take care. Stay safe. Goodbye.